Welcome to the docket. I'm Bree McAdam, and in Saskatoon courtrooms this week, there were two trial verdicts and a pretty uh, noteworthy drug trafficking case. Um, but first, yesterday, John Pontus, the owner of the Northwoods Inn and Suites on Attawald Drive, was found guilty of sexually assaulting a woman who rented one of his motel suites. Um, a judge found that the woman was telling the truth when she said that Pontus groped her breasts in a back room of the motel last June. But he found Pontus not guilty of raping the woman in his motel suite later that night. Now, the trial. Uh, the case went to trial in September and the woman testified that she approached Pontus when she was short on her rent money and asked him if he would give her a little bit more time. She said he proposed that she could stay if in exchange for sex. Um, now she said she initially agreed, went to his suite, but changed her mind and that that's when Pontus raped her. Pontus testified that he did not offer any kind of uh, sex for rent exchange and that he actually couldn't even remember if the woman had ever been inside of his suite. Um, Judge Morris Baniak found that there just wasn't enough evidence to corroborate the woman's testimony, saying that her use of drugs and alcohol that night also made her memory unreliable. Sentencing is scheduled to take place in February. And a BC man who said he switched places with a driver before a fatal crash near Young, Saskatchewan two years ago was found guilty this week on nine different driving related offenses and they included two counts of drunk driving causing death. 28-year-old um, Brett Bussey um, from Watrous and 27-year-old Adam Powell from Hay River, Alberta were killed in the crash. And Judge Shannon Mativier found that Kyle Stewart was the one driving while extremely intoxicated from the time the group left the Watrous bar up until the time his car lost control around a curve flipping three times. She said his story of switching drivers before the crash was not believable, partly because of the timeline. She said there was little time for him to pull over between the time that witnesses reported seeing the car before and during the crash. Now, sentencing in this case is also scheduled to take place in February. And the last person to be sentenced in connection with Project for SETI, Saskatoon's organized crime investigation back in 2015, happened earlier this week when Daryl Michael Nagy was sentenced to four years in prison after pleading guilty to several cocaine trafficking offenses. Basically, Nagy was a member of the Fallen Saints Motorcycle Club in 2014 when an undercover police agent offered to set him up with a Vancouver drug trafficker to bring a kilo of cocaine into Saskatoon. The conversations were secretly recorded and the drugs were sold to Nagy, who then sold a half kilo back to the police agent. Now, interestingly, Nagy actually thanked the judge and the Crown for his sentence, saying he hopes it will help him lead a better life. As always, you can read more detailed accounts of these stories and more at thestarphoenix.com.